gather ourselves this morning in person and those that are viewing on our broadcast and those that are on our conference call line. We gather this morning to celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And we thank God for him not only dying, but we thank God that he promised he would get up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. So make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We come to bless his name because he is a risen Savior. Christ the Lord is risen today. Everyone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Christ the Lord is risen today. Everyone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Christ the Lord is risen today. Everyone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this opportunity we have gathered this morning. And we've come as your people, as, your, as the believers, as the women went to the tomb and found the tomb empty, empty, we come this morning knowing that you are not in the grave, that you have risen. And so now, God, we ask that you bless this occasion, bless this worship experience as we gather to worship your name in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Heavenly Dove. Reign upon us this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our choir is going to come and render us a selection, and then followed by that, our youth pastor, Pastor Karen, is going to come and read the scripture lesson for this morning, coming out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 7, and then I'll be back before you.
morning's scripture reading will be coming from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 7 from the New King James Version. And it reads, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. This is the word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As we now come to the moment in our worship experience, the worship through giving, those in person as you have come in, you have given, we encourage those who are viewing on our broadcast and those that are also viewing on our uh, social media pages uh, that you would, uh, you would give. Uh, the uh, media ministry will pull up the slide uh, which will show you the ways of giving. Uh, you, if you have the capability of downloading or if you have already on your phones, uh, the Zelle app, and you can just certainly type in sttimothy at hotmail.com, and you can give through Zelle, or you can go through our website and hit the giving tab, and then hit the donate button, and you can certainly give electronically those ways. If you're on our conference call line and you're listening to the service this morning, uh, you can have an opportunity to give as well. You can also mail in your offering this uh, for today in the mail at 1600 West 25th Avenue, Gary, Indiana, 464, 46404. And we encourage you uh, to give, for giving is uh, an act of worship. Let us pray, Almighty God, we thank you for the giver, and we thank you for the gifts. And God, we ask that you would bless the giver as they have given, that you would give back unto them, good measure, pressed down, shaken over, that you would give unto men. And we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our music ministry will come back to us with their sermonic selection. And then follow that, we'll hear from our youth pastor this morning, um, Pastor William S. Curran, who will give us uh, the uh, sunrise service message.
Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Yes, yes, yes. First, giving honor to God, my creator, sustainer, comforter, keeper, lover, the head of my life. I do give all the praise and glory and honor to 
to our pastor, uh, Reverend Jackson. I do thank God for him for this opportunity to stand and deliver this sunrise service message. And uh, all to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is just a good day to be in the house of the Lord. And it's the, the, it's the, holy, <clears throat> it's the holy Super Bowl. And we are celebrating it early, and we're celebrating it all day. Um, but let, me, let us not be remiss. There is a word from the Lord. Uh, let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you and we love you. We ask that you continue to bless us, keep us. We thank you for this worship experience for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. And Lord, we ask that you continue to keep your loving, protecting arms around us. For now, God, is preaching time. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the true and living God, fall fresh on us. God, take out William and increase you so that your, per your power, your authority may be seen. And so someone may be saying and running, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. amen. If you will turn your attention towards Luke chapter 24 again. And it reads in verses 1 through 7, if you have it, say amen. If you don't ha have it, say hold on a minute. And just to help you, it's one of the Gospels of the Bible. Luke chapter 24, verse 1, and it reads, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. If you would, I would like to talk about, for the subject matter, a wall. A wall. This term, a wall, is particularly used in the military, army, navy services when someone who is a part of the crew, someone who is a part of the army goes AWOL. This word AWOL means absent without leave. And so when someone goes absent without leave, they are leaving without telling anyone. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. They are leaving without telling anyone. They do not tell the commanding official. They do not tell their lieutenant. They do not tell their fellow comrades. All that, they're, all that those people know is that person at this very point in time is missing. And so today we see that Jesus has gone AWOL. He's gone absent without leave. Let's, let's go down. Let's go back to the, a few days ago. Thursday, he has a meeting with the disciples. He dines and he feasts with them and tells them that he's going away for a while. Then on Friday, he is crucified. He is crucified and he says, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. He says, it is finished. He gets off the old rugged cross. They take him down and put him, notice they put him in a borrowed tomb. Now the first thing that we must ask, when is the last time you ever heard of someone dying and saying, can I borrow that tomb? 
When is the last time you saw someone die and get back up again? But Jesus says to them, I need to borrow it because I'm not going to be in it for long. And so also, we see that the women Mary, they were, the, the three Marys, they were looking for Jesus. And can you imagine Mary, Jesus' mother, looking to seek after her son even after he's died? Looking to wrap his body even the more with, with fresh smelling uh, scents and fragrances so his body would not decompose even further. Can't you see Mary going to the tomb? And then two people saying, he's not here. And so the first thing that they experienced, they experienced the death of Jesus. But next, it says, if you still have your Bibles open, it says, and it happened, they were greatly perplexed about this. This word perplexed literally means they were in doubt. How is it that the man we just crucified and put in this, again, borrowed tomb, that he is not here? You can't tell us, tell me that my son isn't at the same place why I laid him to rest. And so they had doubt of the resurrection. But then these two men, the angels, said there's still joy in him being a wall. And the joy is in verse 7 when they say the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. And so when Jesus was being delivered into the hands of the sinful men, he was dying for you and I. Can't you just imagine, let's do the picture painting for a second. They spit on Jesus. They smacked Jesus in the face. They whipped him with a whip that had uh, things on them that so sharp that it scratched his skin open. They mocked Jesus. They gave him vinegar to alleviate his pain. They tried to humiliate him. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And that part, that right there, my brothers and my sisters, that is the deliverance from the cross. And that is to show that the deliverance from the tomb. And so Jesus, after the death, after the doubt, he is now delivered from the tomb. And so he's saying, now I'm lifted up. And you can't see it because now Jesus, even though he's AWOL, he's missing from the tomb, but he's not missing from our lives. And so the glory of it, the, the shouting in the text, the hallelujah in the text is, yes, he's not there, but he's still here right in our lives on today. And someone ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Someone ought to say, hallelujah. Someone ought to praise his name because he got up with all power in his hands. The church of old would say he had power to walk right. He got up with power to talk right. He got up with power to live right. And we ought to thank God that he got up with power. Because if it was not for his power, where would you and I be on today? If he was not mocked, spit on, beaten, bruised, and put on the cross, then where would you and I be today? But I'm so glad that we have a Savior that got up. Look at, look, let's look at the track record of life. I, lo I love doing different studies. And I saw that in the study of Buddha, Buddha died, but Buddha did not get up. Confucius died, but Confucius did not get up. Constantinople died, but he did not get up. Martin Luther King, he was a great man, he died, but he did not get up. But one thing we can say that this man Jesus died and he got up with all power in his hands. And so we ought to say thank you Jesus for getting up for me. Because you laid down your life so that we can live through you. And so even though the tomb is empty, he has gotten up with all power. Power in his hands so that we can live for him. And so 
The moral of the story mm. is he got up. He got up. And not only did he got up, but when he got up, we got up. Come on. We got up from sin. Sin wanted to kill us. Sin wanted to leave a penalty of death on us that was so unremarkable that we would not know how to deal with it. But yet Jesus laid down his life for a friend. And he saw so much in us that he said, let me die for you so that you can live for me. Come on. And so also in closing, there's a lot of things that are held against us. There's a lot of things that we see that we are dealing with in this flesh. And so Satan, as being the adversary, let us go to the courtroom for a second. And when we go to the courtroom, we are the defendant. Satan is the plaintiff. And God is the judge. Satan pulls out all of these fouls on you. Satan lists your sin from the time of birth to the time of death and says, God, your honor, you should not bless the defendant. You should not give this defendant the crown of life. This defendant lies. This defendant curses. This defendant does not like or love your fellow children. And then that's when before the hammering of the gavel goes down, that's when the attorney, the defense attorney, Jesus, walks into the room. And he says, Your Honor, I object. Because I can recall a time when the defendant said, For God I live and for God I will die. I, I can recall when the defendant said, I love the Lord and he heard my cry. And if that's anybody's testimony, when we know that we were sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, that's when Jesus stepped in and said, I object. And said, God, I need you to listen out for them because they're yours and you're theirs. And so if you're not too mean, we ought to praise God and say, thank you, God, for dying for us. Yeah, yeah. And being on our behalf. We ought to thank God because in this Holy Ghost Super Bowl of celebration today, we see that we serve a Savior who still lives, and he lives through us. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. There may be one who is looking to be a part of the family of faith, and we extend this invitation for you to have a chance at the tree of life. You may be saying, Pastor Curry, I'm saved, but I do need a church home. You may be viewing and saying, I need a church home. And St. Timothy Community Church would love to be a church. Pastor Jackson would love to be your pastor. I would love to be your youth pastor. Is there one on today? Being saved is as easy as A, B, C. First, A is acknowledging that all of us are sinners and have sinned against God. But B is being a baptized believer. And C is confessing with your mouth that he is Christ the Lord. Is there one on today? Let us pray for those that may be viewing online. Lord God, we thank you, we love you. We ask that you bless your people. We ask that you touch and prick the hearts of man so that man may see your good works. Lord, we know that we are not perfect, but we're striving towards the mark. And Lord, there may be one who is lost, who is wandering, who is just looking for the right message to lead
lead their lives back to you. Lord, I pray for that person. Lord, I ask God that they have a relationship with you like no time before. We ask that you bless them, and not just to be a part of this church, but be, uh, be a part of the body of believers and believe that Christ died, he got up, and he's coming back again. He's coming, you're coming back again for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. So we thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name that we do pray, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. As we depart from the sanctuary to go into the fellowship hall, uh, we will bless the food um, and, and do the benediction as well. Let us pray. Unless we want to stay for another 30 minutes and I could preach again and we can do this. All. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Lord, I ask that you bless us. Lord, I ask that you continue to keep us, Lord, as we go and fellowship and dine with one another, God. We ask that you bless the food that was prepared for the nourishment of our bodies. Lord, continue to uplift our spirits, God. Some may be low, some may be hurting. Some, God, want to un have some understanding. And we know that you are able to pick us up, turn us around, and place our feet on higher ground as long as we lean, trust, and depend on you. So we thank you, oh God. We ask that you bless us as we depart from the sanctuary and, and go into fellowship with one another. In Jesus Christ our Lord, we do pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all God's children said, amen.